In this video, I want to talk about VDOMs, what they are and how do we configure them. So for today's demo, I'm going to be working on my 40F unit and we're going to create two virtual domains or two VDOMs, one called dev and another one called prod. So looking at my firewall right now, we have a couple of interfaces. The most important interface is our web interface. This is connecting us to my home network, 192.168.4.200. So this interface is connecting us to the internet. To enable VDOMs here, let's open our CLI console, config system global, because this is done in the global configuration context. And the command there is set VDOM mode. And there's really only two options to either enable or disable VDOMs. We want to enable them. When you exit this context, the firewall is going to force a logout. It says you'll be logged out. Do you agree? We say yes. Now we log back in and immediately at the top right hand side, you can see that the VDOMs have been enabled and we're sitting already in the global VDOM. The root VDOM gets created by default. Let's go to system to have a look at that. Click on VDOM and you cannot delete the root VDOM. So from here, let's create our two new VDOMs. I'll call one prod. It's going to be a traffic VDOM and profile based, and I will leave all the settings the way they are. And then our second VDOM, we'll call it dev. All right, so now we have our two custom VDOMs. Next, we want to allocate physical network interfaces to these VDOMs. So we go to network interfaces, I want to allocate port 3 to prod. Click on the drop down, select prod. And while here already, I'll give it an IP address 172.16.35.1. This will be slash, 30, uh, slash 24. And I actually want to create a DHCP pool over here. The pool will start at dot 200 and end at dot 210. All right. And then now let's do the same. LEN2 would go to dev. And that will be 172.16.36.1 slash 24. And also a DHCP service over here, starting at 200, ending at 210. And now by default, we have our first set of VDOM links. Essentially, VDOM links connect our, our new VDOMs to the root VDOM for internet connectivity. And so um, they are point to point. That's important to note. And I'm going to open VLink 0 and associate that with the root VDOM. Let's give it an IP address. Let's say 10.160.254.1 slash 30. I'll just make a, make a comment there that this is a link to prod. Now, the first part of the VLink is configured. It's associated with the root VDOM. It has an IP address. Let's now configure the second part and associate it with the prod VDOM. I'm going to paste that address and then change the IP to .2. We did say that this is a point to point and link, link to root. Next, let's create another inter VDOM link connecting our root VDOM with our dev VDOM. We'll call this dev link. And link zero would belong to the root VDOM and dev link one will belong to the dev vdom and the ip address range here let's make it 10.160.253.1 slash 30 and this one would be dot two link to dev link to root just so we know exactly where we are going back to our vdom view what we've just done is we've associated the physical interfaces, prod has LAN3 interface, dev has LAN2 interface. And for inter VDOM routing, the prod VDOM has VLink1 connecting us to the root VDOM. Dev VDOM has dev link one connecting us to the root VDOM. Now, following from this, let's create our static routes in each of the VDOMs, starting with the prod VDOM. When prod, we go to network and we create our default static route. And the next hop IP address is 10.160.254.1. And then we now go to the dev. And in the dev VDOM, we create our static route. The next hop there is going to be 
10.160.253.1. I believe the routing is in place. Now the only thing that remains is for us to create our firewall policy allowing traffic outbound. So I'm going to start with say prod. Let's go to firewall policy and I'm simply going to call this internet access. And the incoming interface there is LAN3. Outgoing interface would be VLink1 interface. The source, I'm just going to select all. And destination is also all. This is our internet policy and all for service. And then we're going to net our traffic out and click on OK. Now we do the same thing in our dev VDOM. We call that internet access policy. The incoming interface will be our LAN2 interface. The outgoing would be dev link 1. The source will say all. Destination all. Service all. And once again, we net our traffic. That's it for our downstream VDOMs. Now all this traffic is going to traverse the root VDOM. So we need to go to the root VDOM and allow this traffic out. Our internet policy, we'll just call it internet access for dev and the prod VDOM. And the incoming interface, devlink0 and vlink0, those two interfaces. And the outgoing interface, of course, is going to be our WAN interface. And the source will say all and destination all, as well as the service. And we'll keep net enabled and click on OK. I'm going to first navigate to the dev and our LAN interface is down because there's nothing connected there. I'm quickly going to connect my laptop and do our testing there. Now our interface has come up. Let's have a look at our dashboard and we can see this one client on this device and it has an IP address 172.166.200. Now let's have a look at our session table and see what that laptop is doing. And already we see a lot of sessions from this workstation. So we know that this computer is working and we can also check this by doing diagnose sniffer packet any host 172.16.36.200 and we see quite a lot of traffic um, coming in and out of the LAN2 interface. Now that is for the dev environment. Now let's move on to the prod environment and have a look there. So with the prod environment, nothing is connected. I'm going to move that cable from port two and connect it to port three. Now refreshing my screen, we can see LAN3 has just become active. Let's go into the dashboard and have a look at the clients that we have there now. And we have one DHCP client. It has an IP address 172.165.200. Now this part I'll do in the CLI. Let's have a look at our session table. 172.165.35.200. And we can see quite a lot of traffic from this laptop already. And I guess the most important thing that I want to demonstrate is how network address translation has actually happened. So to do that, we go diagnose debug flow, trace start, I'll say 100, diagnose debug flow filter with the 172.16.35.200 address, address, and then diagnose debug, enable. Okay. We're seeing some outputs there. So looking at this output here, let's try to piece together some of the important information we can get from this. We know that the, 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 the protocol is 17. That means that this is a UDP stream that we're looking at. And our source, 172.165.200. Look at our port number. It's 56972. And the destination is 96 45 45 45. And the destination port is 53. So immediately we know that this has to be a DNS. We also know that the incoming interface is LAN3. And because we just configured our interviewdom link, we, we immediately identified the IP address 10.162.54.1 to be the next hop IP address that belongs to the root VDOM. And we know that the egress interface there is VLink1. Also notice that this traffic is going to be subject to source net. That means this flow is going to be translated to 10.162.54.2. And we can see that over here where this SNET action, where 172.165.200 gets converted to 10.162.54.2 before it gets passed on to 10.162.54.1 via the VLink interface. And when we type get system session list, 
CREP 172.16.35.200. This is a summarized version of what we were looking at just now. Because we also filtered, we're only going to see the source address in, in, in this column here, but we also know that this is being translated to 10.162.54.2, and we can see multiple sessions going to multiple destinations. And again, if we do this in the GUI, we go down to 40 view sessions, we get to see what this PC is all about. And even if we end all sessions, it's just going to continue. And when we refresh, we'll see the sessions begin to populate again. And this brings us to the end of this video on virtual domains. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.